Boston Wrestling Sports and the MWF explodes into a new year of unknown with professional wrestling content galore, and we need you to join our family. Every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. after we review the previous night's Monday Night Raw, it's Wrestling Insiders at your house with the unpredictable WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. Wednesday nights after WWE, NXT, and AEW at 10 p.m., you never know who's going to show up on Wrestling Insiders Special Edition. Every Thursday night at 10 p.m. after our NXT and Dynamite review, it's Marty Jannetty's No Holds Barred, Sex, Drugs, and Rock and Roll Journey Through the 80s and 90s on Wrestling Insiders Party with Marty. Friday nights after the lights go down at the Thunderdome on SmackDown, it's John Cena Sr.'s Wrestling Insiders Fabulous Fridays. Plus, look for classic clips, bonus live episodes, pay-per-view watch-alongs, and more. If you want early, ad-free access to all of our Wrestling Insider talk shows, our acclaimed studio shoot interview DVD library, and to help keep wrestling legends working during the worst of times, for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks, join our growing family at patreon.com backslash Boston Wrestling. Expect the unexpected in 2021. Did you ever get involved with a female wrestler in a relationship? No. Never, really. Never now, Never why did. was that? Was it by choice? No, because Moola wouldn't let you. Okay. They, they was all, she was very strict with her girls. So you believe that Moola really went out of her way to try and protect yeah. the girls? And plus, most of the female wrestlers was white, and I couldn't date white women. Why? <laughs> you know why. It's America. <laughs> Well, let me ask you this, Tony. A lot of the there's America. You can't date white women back in the seventies. Are you kidding me? In the eighties. A lot of the trainees went on to say that Moolah took a ridiculous percentage from them, as much as forty percent of their paydays. Then, uh, some overheard her at one point trying to take uh, a little food and tr uh, hotel money that was promised to them by the promoters, and she pocketed that too. Did you ever hear stories like that that she financially we're exploited all, these we're women? We're all agents. All agents got a percentage. Mm -hmm. She was an agent. They all got a percentage. 40%. Well, I don't know if it was that of what the exact amount was. Everybody, a lot of people like to exaggerate the numbers. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. A lot of people that would, would, would exaggerate the number. But a lot of them went to school that didn't pay. So they trained it, came out, they paid. When they started paying, they, you know, some, some paid, was able to pay up front for their training. Some was not. Those that was not. Moolah deducted from their pay. So to be fair to the fabulous Moolah, a lot, a lot of these female trainees, they didn't pay anything when they went to her initially. A lot, some of them did. Well, that's some, only some fair did. then that they right. were Right, so she, the, those that did not, she deducted uh, 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 from their pay. Two sides to every story, and you yeah, actually yeah. knew the woman. Yep. Uh, John, I, John Cena Sr. and I had quite a, a video mm -hmm. about the Moolah situation uh, that was available online last week. There was talk that there was lesbian sex that went on with Mueller and some of these trainees. Did you ever hear any rumors to that extent? Well, I, I, I hear rumors about it, but I never sex. witnessed. But there was also homosexual sex among the guys that nobody talked about. Yeah. So all in all, you think Mueller's getting a bad rap right now? Oh, of course. She always did. Tell us the fabulous Mueller that you know. She was a hard worker, tough, very business orientated, very friendly, uh, very hard working. When I first met Mula, we was in Charlotte, North Carolina, and Dusty Rose was coming in for the show. They flew him in. Uh, Terry Funk was coming in. They flew him in. Andre the Giant was coming in. They flew him in. Mula came in. She drove. And I never forget that. Really? Yeah. They didn't fly Mula around. They didn't take care of. See, the guys never really wanted women in the business. Yeah. They figured this is a man's sport. They. Women don't belong in the business. That was just a belief in the 60s, the 70s. And so women's always had a very, very, very... Just recently, I noticed Vince McMahon had done more for women wrestlers than any promoter that sure I had seen. You know, he started a whole new woman division. Almost to the point where they're over-pushing it, but that's a different story. No, for they're different not over-pushing it. Oh, I disagree with you on that, Tony. No, I, think I don't think they're over-pushing it. I'll tell you the reason why I, 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 I don't think they are uh, over-pushing it because it's not wrestling no more. All right. It's sports entertainment. You are correct. It's sports entertainment that is not wrestling. Now, in the wrestling days, guys want to see two big, hairy, 300-pound guys go at it. In today's time, people just want to be entertained. They don't care if, if you're a good wrestler. That was true with Bob Backer, who was a, a great amateur, a great pro wrestler. But then a guy that maybe had five moves 
called Huck Hogan, came and took his place, became the biggest draw that you ever see. Another guy named Dusty Rose that never saw the inside of a gym that had maybe three moves became a bigger name than Bob Backlund. So it got to the place where your wrestling ability was not as important as putting ashes in the seat. Right. There's certain things about certain people, and, and your ability to do that job is not that important. Mm -hmm. If people like you and people pay to see you, or if we're politic and people vote for you, they don't care if you can write your own name. They vote for you, you're in, buddy. Right. And that's what they go by. The ratings tells all. Because when I first started, the best wrestlers were jobbers. Yeah. The best wrestlers was always guys they that... They just went out to try and make the superstars look great. That's right. Because yeah. S.D. Jones was a hell of a wrestler. But he never made it to the top because he couldn't draw money. People were not paid to see S.D. They were paid to see Tony Atlas, who didn't have had half the ability to S.D. They were paid to see Rocky Johnson. They were paid to see Tony Atlas. They were paid to see J.Y.D. J.Y.D. had one move, a hip toss. Close man. <laughs> JD was limited, but he just had he the had great three, the look and the charisma. Moves. Power slam, close land, and a hip toss. That was it. He knew no other moves. All right, Tony. Did you ever travel with Mula? Or did yes, you? I did. I what, was, with what was it like to travel with the very professional life? Yeah. She treated me real good. We talked a lot about business. We talked see in the old days with guys travel, they talk about matches, they talk about the business, they talk about how they could improve themselves, and they and they complimented each other. And they gave each other advice. It's like they always put an older wrestler with a younger wrestler. When you put two young wrestlers together, they used to call that the bland leading the, the bland. bland. Yep. Because what can a young man teach a young man? Right. Nothing. So they always would pair you up with someone older. So they would put with Mula, Johnny Weaver, Wahoo McDaniels, all these guys that was older than me so I could learn from them. So that's why I got to travel with Mula in my younger days because she been everywhere. So I, I could learn. I learned a lot from that woman. All right, Tony, let's wrap this one up. Uh, maybe you can do the late fabulous Moolah. Maybe a little favor. The, the backlash the WWE received from fans on Twitter and social media was out of this world to get her name off of that battle royal. In a couple of sentences, tell the folks the fabulous Moolah that you knew and worked with for so many years. The, the, the Moolah was the pioneer of uh, pro wrestling. And it was for Moolah, the women that wrestled, they would not be wrestling. Moolah kept wrestling going uh, because, like I said, they didn't want the women in the business. So if Moolah was not there to train these women, how were they going to get trained? Right. There was no guy that was going to train a woman to be a wrestler back then. Moolah kept wrestling in the, women wrestling in the business. If Moolah had not dedicated herself to training these women, there would be no place for the women to go train, and there would be very few women. Uh, all, you, all your women, Wendy, Rick, and all of them, they all came from Moolah. You know, that Moolah came from all of them. That was the only place you could go. Women didn't have but one place to go. And Moolah created that one place for them because she saw Moolah was trained by guys. But uh, Sputnik Monroe and all them guys, they the one that helped Moolah. But then they didn't want women in the business. So where can a woman go to get trained? The only one place to go, and that was to Moolah. Right, well. And if it was for Moolah... There would be no Michelle McCoo, there'd be no Wendy Richter, there'd be no Chana. All these women you see, they would not have been in the business. Women would have, went, would have been out of the business in the 70s. All right, wrestling fans. If you're active on social media, I'm sure you've read about things that have been said about Fabulous Moolah. You're talking, hearing from a gentleman that loves this beef jerky that worked with her and knew her, traveled with her. We'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below, as always. Right now, at a...